20 things to consider when selecting a coach for your cleaning business. Hi, I'm Steve Hansen, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. So when you, when you have your cleaning business, you may get stuck at a certain plateau or at a level and you just can't seem to get over that hump and move forward. Um, you may consider hiring a business coach to help you uh, strategize and develop systems to help you get up over that hump. So what I have is I have 20 things you can consider uh, when selecting a coach for your, for your cleaning business. Number one is start with their knowledge level. Because the small business coaching is not a regulated industry, anybody can call themselves a coach, whether they have the knowledge and experience or not. And you know that's very important. So make sure they have their, make sure they have the knowledge level. Number two is, you know, select somebody who has experience, both as a coach and as a small business owner. I think this is very important. You know, you want to, you know, how long have they been uh, a small business coach? You know, how long have they been a small business owner? How many businesses have they owned in the past? And how many clients have they worked with? And a good question is, do they know your industry? That's very important. Number three, Know the size of your business and select a coach accordingly. So what I mean by that is if you're doing $250,000 in revenue or you're doing a million dollars in revenue, $2 million in revenue, you know, select a coach that, that specializes in working with a company your size. So, you know, some, some coaches will either base that off of uh, how many employees that you have or, and or revenue. But it's very important. You know, you want to work with somebody that understands your size business and where you're trying to get to. So keep that into consideration. And generally, if you go and you look at their bios, that they generally explain the, the types of companies that they work with. So that's a good place to find that information. Number four, choose a coach who has both business skills as well as coach, coaching skills. So, you know, Coaching is all about getting unstuck, you know, and implementing, uh, and implementing, you know, uh, which a lot of us have, you know, we have problems with that. Uh, you know, you're also living to your potential. And another big one is managing your time. Those are all things that business owners, we struggle with. So, you know, uh, make sure that, make sure that the, the coach has skills in those areas. Number five, continuous learning. What else does the coach do? I mean, as far as are they continuing to learn other business skills as, as they continue to coach and, and grow their business? So ask them about that. And probably one of the most important ones that I think is um, ask them if they're eating their own cooking. Does the coach have a business coach of their own? Uh, been my experience, uh, in most cases, they don't, uh, which I find rather interesting. You know, here they tell others that they should have a business coach to help them move forward and so on and so forth, but yet they don't have one themselves. Um, we have our own business coach. Uh, we have one of the best that's out there. Um, and it's very important, you know, for us to continue to, to grow our company, uh, we have our business coach and therefore, uh, you know, when I talk to people, I let them know that, yeah, I have my, we have our own coach. We've had a coach for years. But anyway, ask the coach that question. Are you eating your own cooking? Meaning that, do you have a coach? Number seven is check their testimonials. You know, um, are the coaches other clients like you? Um, you know, does the coach have uh, much experience working with uh, business owners like you? Uh, in the industry you're in. You know, we I often find this kind of interesting because people will hire coaches that know nothing about the cleaning industry, residential or commercial. Uh, it's, it's just interesting. And I often find that very true when they think about hiring somebody to help them with their marketing. They often hire companies that know nothing, uh, marketing companies, that know nothing about the cleaning industry. So. That's a, that you need to take that into consideration. Um, why, why would you want to pay somebody for their supposed skills only to learn from you 
or learn about your business or your industry. I don't think you should do that. Number eight is expert status. You know, does this, uh, does this coach, do they write uh, articles? Do they speak? <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, do they teach on, on business topics? Um, you know, is, is he or she known as an expert in their field? Uh, you know, that's quite obvious because if, you, if you're seeing them everywhere on social media and you're seeing articles uh, uh, in various places, uh, then chances are that they're probably an expert in their field. Also, you know, you want to make sure that the coach is an expert on business topics. You know, if you're having issues with pricing, uh, hopefully they're an expert at that. Or, or if it's sales or, you know, is it customer service, uh, you know, strategic planning. You know, whatever it is on any of those topics, make sure they're an expert in it. Again, you don't want that personal learning on your time. Okay? So number nine is additional offerings. And what I mean by that is, um, does the coach offer other products and services? Uh, do they offer books, ebooks, you know, audio programs, training programs, or classes? So keep that in mind and ask them that. Now every coach offers free coaching. Uh, they always have an initial free coaching uh, for an initial consultation. So and that's very important. You want to take that and uh, take that time. Uh, so you can see if it's a good fit between you and, and, and the coach. Uh, I offer a, a free 30-minute coaching uh, uh, consultation and it's exactly for that. So I can learn a little bit more about your business and you can learn more about me and what I know and how we can help each other move things forward. And uh, you know, besides that's the bottom line, that's what's important. Uh, number 11, uh, good fit. Just, that, just like I was just saying, you know, we got to make sure that it's a good fit, that personality wise, um, that, uh, that, we, that the coach and the, uh, the client get along, um, that, uh, you know, they both are, you know, it'd be tough if one person was a very energetic person and the, uh, and the other person was quiet. You know, that would be pretty hard uh, to, to really uh, move things forward. Um, but anyway, think about those things. You know, is is it a good fit? And you see, you can generally tell after that uh, initial coaching uh, coaching consultation, you generally will have a really good idea if it's a good fit. Your gut will tell you. Always go with your gut, um, and uh, you, you should be fine. Number twelve is um, who will you work with? And what I mean by that is some of these coaching uh, some of these coaches. Uh, have have coaches that they subcontract to, so you'll have a, you'll have a coach and they'll have multiple coaches underneath them that will uh, coach on the subject that they're teaching. So ask those questions. Make sure that the you know that if you're having a consultant, uh, 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 an initial cons consultant consultant uh, with that person. Um, make sure that you're going to be working with them. You know, again, we got to make sure that the personalities and everything are, are a good fit. So uh, ask the questions, make sure that, that, make sure who are you working with. Number 13 is uh, prompting insights. Uh, does a sm small business coach ask you good questions that give you a ha-ha moment? You know, because that's very important. You know, if, if you don't get a ha-ha moment, um, they're probably not the right coach for you. So think about that. If you haven't gotten that aha moment in that in that initial consultation, then maybe interview some more coaches. Number fourteen. Challenging. Does your coach hold you accountable? You know, and that's something that's very very important. We have to make sure that they're keeping us accountable. You know, do they uh, let us not turn in our homework uh, on time or even complete it? You know that's not good. That that's not not good for anybody. So make sure that they challenge you and make you accountable. Number fifteen is availability. You know, is the coach available to work with you uh, when you need them? Uh, some coaches only work daytime hours. Some others only a night or weekends. So ask those questions. You know, and make sure that that they're available uh, when you need them. You know, myself, uh, you know, we, I'm available all the time, uh, you know, 24-7 through email, so uh, that's, that's one way that my clients contact me. 
Number 16, fees and programs. Now you have to make sure that you talk about this. We have to know what, what we're getting charged for, uh, for the, the, the coaching. Uh, make sure that it's clear that you understand and make sure that there's no hidden fees, no upcharges and things like that. Okay. Number 17 is uh, teach by example. Now this is kind of like, uh, like I was saying earlier about uh, coaches eating their own cooking. You know, because good coaches demonstrate how something should be done uh, so you can follow their example and or use templates. And that's what you'll find out if you work with me that I've got hundreds of templates that, that we can use for various things that, that we're doing as we're working through uh, building our systems and or uh, other things. Number 18, admits their failures. Now this is this is huge. You, we have to make sure that the person's ego isn't that big that they can admit to their failures. Um, in the 33 years that I've been in business, I've made plenty of made uh, <laughs> had a lot of failures. So um, you know, and I openly talk about them because I want people to learn from my past experiences and not what to do. So very important. Number 19, um, driven when it comes to your success. So what I mean about that is look for somebody who is generally interested in seeing you succeed. Um, very important. You know, myself, that's where I get the biggest kick is when, when a client tells me that they've, that they've gone to the next level or they've closed the, uh, uh, closed the deal. You know, many times uh, I'll have clients and members call and tell me that, hey Steve, you know that, that project we were working on that you helped me price or whatever it may be. You know, we closed the deal on it. You know, and it could be for a couple hundred thousand dollars. You know, that's great. That's what I like to hear. And number twenty is uh, strong ethics. Now we have to remember that when we're working with a coach, that you know we're going to be sharing information with that person, and some of that could be very personal information. So make sure that the the, the coach that you're potentially going to be working with has a uh, strong ethics. Very important. Now something that, uh, you know, I, what I have in my programs is uh, I have a couple of different coaching programs. And um, our, we have one program that's a, a group coaching program where we meet once a month for an hour and a half. And uh, this is uh, through a Zoom call. And uh, you can be uh, any level of company that you want and you can join that, that uh, group call or the group coaching. I have another program for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, that is the business development coaching program. Uh, this is where I work with business owners to develop systems for their company. And it's a it's a quite an intense uh, program. We have calls every two week, every two weeks, and uh, they're typically about an hour long. The calls are recorded, and what we do is that we go through uh, go through this system developing various systems that you need for your business based off the five core pillars of business. So like I say, it gets pretty intense. You know, I've got, uh, I've got uh, uh, clients that will be individual, individual owners that will be on, uh, be on the call, and then I have others that have actual team members that join us on the call. Like I say, the, the key for building your systems is that you, if you, if you can, have your team get involved with it because it's, it's a lot of work. Um, and we can talk more in depth about this on our initial, uh, our initial coaching call. So, well that's it uh, for today. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, if, you, uh, if you found this to be some good information, you know, please click the like button down below. And uh, make sure you share it with others. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, uh, please subscribe. And, uh, you know, we, we, we're putting out more and more videos uh, each week uh, with a lot of great information. So uh, uh, go ahead and subscribe. And until then, we'll see you later.